Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be doing a CPU benchmark comparison for Monster Hunter Wilds. This is one of the most CPU demanding games of 2025. So we're going to be looking at CPUs as far back as Zen 3. So this is the 5800X. This is the non-X3D because I think this gives people who are interested in playing Monster Hunter a really good idea of how far back they can go in terms of how old their PC can be and not be incredibly CPU limited. So I think the results that you're going to see with this CPU are going to be pretty surprising overall. So the 5800X and then the second CPU is going to be the rival for the 5800X is going to be the Intel 11th gen. This is the Intel Core i7 11700K. The the official Olympic CPU from 2021. Next we have the Alder Lake. This is the Intel 12th gen. This is the successor to the Intel 11th gen because that CPU was a little bit underwhelming when it came out back in 2021. So that at the end of 2021, the 12th gen launched. So this introduced DDR5 capable motherboards, but most people that upgraded to this in 2021 are probably on a DDR4 motherboard. So we will be testing this with DDR4 to show what happens if you're playing this game on a PC from either late 2021 or sometime in early 2022. Next we have the 13th gen flagship CPU. This is going to be the Intel Core i9 13900K. So this one is more of like a production semi-prosumer workstation class processor because it has a lot of cores. So this has the 8P cores and the 16E cores, and it also still has hyper-threading on the P cores. So it has a total of 32 threads in Windows. So pretty good CPU overall, does use a lot of power, but it gets the job done. Next we have AMD's famous 3D vCache CPU. So this one is going to be their productivity with 3D vCache. This is kind of the best all-rounder, the full package in terms of gaming and content creation. So this one is a 16-core, 32-thread, amazing processor. So we're going to see how this handles the game when you have vCache plus high-frequency core counts for background tasks because we will see that the game can scale to a lot of threads. Then I have included the Tech Thursdays PC as well. This is going to be the 9950X. This is currently AMD's flagship CPU based off of their latest Zen 5 architecture. A really good choice for people who are doing content creation productivity. I personally use this for the live stream PC that we use for the Tech Thursdays live shows that I do every single Thursday. So if you're new to the channel, do get subscribed and hit the bell icon so you get notified for when I go live if you want to engage with the audience on all things PC DIY and gaming. Next we have Intel's latest and greatest Intel Core Ultra series. This is going to be their flagship CPU from last year. This is the Core Ultra 9 285K. This is a really good alternative to the 9950X. It does have a brand new socket. It does have a brand new chipset. So we will be showing how this CPU handles Monster Hunter Wilds and how it compares to the others. And last but not least, we have the currently the fastest gaming CPU on the market. This is going to be the Zen 5 with X3D on a single CCD. This is an eight core, 16 thread, definitely meant for gaming. And we will see how well the X3D with the Zen 5 architecture can perform in this incredibly CPU demanding game. And with that said, let's get into the benchmarks.
All right, so let's do a recap here on what we just saw in these results. So the 5800X is a CPU from 2020, releasing alongside the PS5, Xbox Series X, the RTX 30 series graphics cards, and the Radeon 6000 series graphics cards. So it represents a Zen moment where the stars aligned for the first time in like 14 years, and AMD CPUs were the best in every objectable way possible. So anyone still on a Zen 3 CPU is probably in a good spot going into Monster Hunter Wilds. Next we have the 11700K. So the 11700K was often called a waste of sand by some hardware enthusiasts. We can kind of see that with these results where Rocket Lake gets beat by every other CPU on this list. However, the 11th gen continues to be Intel's only recent desktop processor that provides the full AVX 512 support. All right, so 12th gen. 12th gen is notable in that it is compatible with both DDR4 and DDR5. However, most people that upgraded to a 12th gen CPU ended up reusing their DDR4 or just choosing the older memory because the price of DDR5 was extremely expensive when these CPUs launched. So that brings me to the 13th gen. So the 13900K that I have here, despite its age, the 13900K put up impressive numbers in Monster Hunter Wilds, beating both Intel and AMD's latest high core count CPUs. It still loses to X3D though, while also consuming more power than every other CPU tested. It also touched 100 degrees Celsius quite often while playing this game. All right, AMD introduced a radical new innovation in CPU design in the spring of 2022 with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. That CPU instantly became the world's fastest gaming CPU. It was so good that all the people that play Star Citizen at the time started upgrading en masse to the 5800X 3D. Fast forward a year later, and AMD introduced the Zen 4 X3D with a 16 core. Now we come to AMD's Zen 5. So Zen 5 is AMD's latest architecture. The Ryzen 9 9950X is an excellent choice for a productivity workstation without having to spend an insane amount of money on a Threadripper. That doesn't mean you can't play Monster Hunter Wilds with this CPU. The 9950X is incredibly reliable providing consistent multi-thread performance. Though when it comes to Monster Hunter Wilds compared to its peers, it does fall a bit short. All right, the Core Ultra 9 285K is Intel's latest flagship CPU. In Monster Hunter Wilds, it performs a lot better than all the older DDR4 CPUs until you start comparing it to the most recent CPUs with X3D. It also loses to its predecessor, the 13900K. However, it only loses by a small amount while consuming a lot less power. Finally, we have the highly sought after Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. This CPU launched in November of 2024 and really shines as a potential value king for those looking to upgrade their gaming PC for Monster Hunter Wilds. This CPU managed to beat every CPU I tested 
except for the 7950X3D. So conclusion time. It's kind of a no-brainer for someone that primarily games and is planning to sink hundreds if not thousands of hours into Monster Hunter Wilds. The X3D CPUs are the top choice. The fact Capcom recommends turning on frame gen at the start of their benchmark as well as mentioning that it is enabled for all their system requirement lists indicates that the average hardware out there is incapable of handling this game due to how CPU demanding it is. And by incapable, I mean drops below 60 FPS. Therefore, if you can afford to upgrade one component in your PC, it would either be the CPU and or the RAM, depending on which platform you're on. So if you're on AM5, it's pretty simple. You just upgrade to the latest X3D CPUs while retaining everything else. If you're on Intel, it's a bit more challenging. If you somehow have a DDR5 motherboard, then you can upgrade to Raptor Lake. In this case, that'd be 14th gen. However, if you are on DDR4, then the best choice is most likely going to be a full upgrade to a Ryzen CPU with X3D. Overall, I set out to make this video primarily because I wanted to know which CPU would provide me with the best experience, knowing what I know about how Dragon's Dogma 2 turned out last year at launch, almost a year ago now, I figured the CPU would be the most impactful component for this game. Therefore, I will be upgrading to the 9950X3D. Yes, a CPU that I didn't even test because it isn't even out yet. The results from the 7950X3D pretty much told me that yeah, 9950X3 is the way to go. This game is so CPU bound that you're going to want high core count plus X3D. So you're gonna want high memory bandwidth, which you can get that with a high core count Ryzen CPU because of the way the Infinity Fabric is set up with a dual CCD. You want X3D because X3D is just straight up good with gaming. If you have that combination, that's basically the best choice based on all the testing that I've done so I'm actually very impressed that the 750X3D managed to beat the 9800X3D. I was actually surprised that that happened. I was not expecting the 9800X3D to lose, and it actually lost. Uh, the one that actually was very impressive, though, there were two that really stuck out. Number one, the oldie but goodie, the 5800X, is a beast of a CPU. We saw this last year with the... Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail benchmark, the 5800X was a top performer in that game as well. That was an MMO. Despite its age, it was really, really good. The other one that did very good was Intel's Raptor Lake. So the 13th gen, you know, this is this controversial CPU that dies over time due to voltage degradation. Yeah, this thing, it uses a lot of power. It runs really hot. You know, I saw this thing touching 100 degrees Celsius quite often while testing this game, and then also on the live streams for the game during the beta test. And those of you that were live when you guys saw that, I mean, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, 1300K does bring the performance, despite not having any X3D. It's got really good memory bandwidth, so that one is really good as well. So those were the three that were impressive. So this has me stoked so much so that I will be upgrading to the 9950X3D on its launch day. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be covering that CPU with Monster Hunter Wilds. We're probably going to do most of the post-game content on the 9950X3D. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I will see you in Monster Hunter Wilds. Until then, take care and I'll see you then. Thanks.